welcome to Variety Bandbox. <laughs> How do you do, everybody? This is Philip Slesser speaking from the stage of the Cambridge Theatre, London, presenting the people of Variety to a variety of people. Supporting the artist today, we have, as usual, Billy Turnant's orchestra with the maestro himself, Billy Turnant. <laughs> Opening our program, as usual, with musical entertainment, we have a welcome return visit of an old variety bandbox favorite of ours from the North Country. He's master of an instrument which isn't quite as easy as it looks, that is, if you want to play it really well as he does. Billy Uke Scott. <laughs> But isn't that half of the fun When I'm only singing to one Good evening, everyone. I'd like to start my program tonight by taking you for a visit down by the old turnstile. <laughs> country place, it's just outside of town, a lovely little spot you would agree, where all the courting couples go, and when the sun goes down, you'll more than likely find my girl and me, down by the old turnstile, where life is made worthwhile, the perfect place to tell a girl the tale, admit that there are people, and they might overhear, but they just do the same as you, so they can't interfere and when the sun goes down they all creep back to town my girl and i feel lonely for a while but when that look creeps in her eyes it's a blessing in disguise to be down by the old turnstile down by the old turnstile where life is made worthwhile they tell me that it's always been the same when grandpa did his courting in 1896 that that's the place where Grandma put an end to all his tricks And when he sees me go, he nods and says I know And watches from the window with a smile And now although he's 85, he's still glad to be alive When he's down by the old turnstile It always pays to linger for a while Cause if your wish is very strong Then you won't be wishing long If you're down by the old dance And now, as usual, here is yet another little medley To show that melody can be played upon the ukulele
Holmes, an expert performer of stage, screen and radio, whose fine character sketches and songs were for a long time a feature of London's Windmill Theatre. Uh, nowadays, he graces that famous resort, the waterlogged spa, and he comes along here to us today in a number of different familiar disguises. Here he is, Eric Woodburn. <laughs> very much. Have you ever thought how many people look at events from the angles of their own professions? See what I mean? The same scene, the same place, but different points of view. Now, take, for instance, a fashionable wedding held recently in a little village church. Well, our reporter with his recording machine mingled with the crowd, picking up different viewpoints, just as the wedding party came out onto the porch. And the first person he recorded was the commanding officer of the bridegroom's regiment. This is what he said. <coughs> well, young horsey's done it at last. <coughs> yes, they, they call him horsey in the mess. It's because of his initials, GG. <laughs> Rather subtle, don't you think? Yes. Gad, the regiment should be proud of Captain Durboys today. Look how he's standing at attention. Thumbs beautifully in line with the seams of his trousers. <laughs> There's tradition for you. You'd never think a few hours ago he was completely cockeyed. Yes, click to the teeth. I say, they're moving off now. I'm going to put down a barrage of confetti. Here goes. Oh, oh I, I'm sorry, sir. Uh, my trajectory was a bit high. Uh, I, I didn't allow for the wind. Uh, well, well, if it's gone in your eye, blow your nose. What? Yes, and blow you too, sir. <laughs> And the next person the reporter picked up was a dress designer, Madame Fleurette. <laughs> Here comes the bride of that old hag, the bride's mother. <laughs> Every stitch they've got on, I designed. Hmm? What do I think of Mama? <laughs> My dear, I simply loathe her gussets. <laughs> oh, she's quite out of place here. Oh, yes, she'd be much more at home in a meadow. <laughs> See that bustle effect at the back? Well, there's one of my largest pins lurking there. <laughs> Wait till she sits down. She'll be livid. <laughs> and look at the bride. <laughs> my dear, the way I slaved with that girl. But what could I do with that flat figure? Her mother suggested massage. Massage, I said, tie a bicycle pump. <laughs> and look at her at the, uh, look at her at the back. Simply mountainous. I said, you don't want me, you want the carpenter with a chisel. <laughs> oh, she was livid. <laughs> then the wretched mother bought some crepe georgette. All the wrong colour. Oh, I, I, I just couldn't stand it. I screamed solidly for ten minutes. <laughs> so then she wanted to know what she could do with the stuff. Played right into my hands. <laughs> Look at them both laughing. Wait till they get my bill. They won't laugh then. They'll be livid. <laughs> and finally, a recording was made of a rugby football commentator describing the scene. Well, there's a tremendous crowd here, whistling and shouting, but thoroughly good-natured. There's rather a high cross wind blowing, but... Oh, here they come, led by the captain, who's just entered from the penalty area. That is, the church. Yes. The bride, the bride's shaking hands now, and she... Oh, she's dropped her bouquet. The captain's made a dive for it, but he's missed, and the wind's carried it right onto the top of square four. <laughs> Vicar's after it now, and there's a sort of loose scrum, but the... The, the oldest inhabitant is dribbling, dribbling, dribbling. Uh, oh, he's just dribbling. Uh, but, he, but the captain's got it again. He simply whipped it backwards to a choir boy who's kicked it high over the heads of the others. It's now safely back in touch with the bride. And there goes the final whistle for the best match of the season. <laughs> Now, here we come to four up-to-the-minute musicians very well known on the air and the halls with piano, guitar, drums, string bass, and voices. The Ray Ellington Quartet. 
speak Irish and up to now. What do you know about that? Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to play a little number now that we hope will take you back to your childhood days. It's all about a little nursery rhyme and it's called The Three Bears. <laughs> now, once upon a time, in a neat little cottage, there were three bears. One was a daddy bear, and one was a mama bear, and one was a wee bear. One day he went out of walking, in the deep woods of stalking, came a little gal with blonde hair. Yes, of course. Now her name was Goldilocks, and upon her door she knocked, but no one was there. Daddy. I'll tell you, son. <laughs> so she walked right in and had herself a time because she didn't care. <sighs> Soon she got sleepy, went to bed upstairs, went home, home, home came the three bears. Someone's been eating my porridge, said the daddy bear. Oh, someone's been eating my porridge. Said the mama bear, hey, Bobbery bear, said the little wee bear, who's the girl that's broken my chair? Someone's been sleeping in my bed, said the daddy bear, oh, someone's been sleeping in my bed, said the mama bear, hey, Bobbery bear, said the little wee bear, who's the girl that's broken my chair? Just then, Goldilocks woke up. Broke up the party and beat it out there. Bye bye, bye bye, said the daddy bear. Goodbye, bye, said the mama bear. Hey, Bobbery bear, said the little wee bear. So ends the story of the three bears. Ba la ba doo ba 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 Whatever you do, don't go down to the woods tonight, because the bears will get you! Bobby, oh, bam, boom, ho! Now comes the most charming and brilliant lady who is often delighted us on this program, Peggy Cochran. And 
she's going to play at the piano a very exciting popular number, Samba Soot. <laughs> Thank you. 